Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about this ePower here that I've just built. So, um, you might recognize this VRM. This is the VRM from the GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming that had the uh, destroyed memory traces on it. And so, I've gone ahead and turned this thing into an ePower. I have deactivated the memory VRM, so I've pulled the other dual end fed, so this memory VRM doesn't currently work. Um, it might, though, once I put the MOSFET back in. I haven't really looked into how to enable this controller, but I've had it in the past where memory VRMs just kind of run once the core does, and once the controller gets, like, VCC, which a lot of times is 12 volts, but the main part of this is that the vCore VRM runs. And enabling this wasn't actually pretty hard. Um, like, yeah, it's just, you cut the thing, you uh, connect the PCI Express 12 volt power plane to the others, which you do down here. If you remember the other video, there's a uh, selector down here where you can connect the lower memory phase to either PCIe or the right 8 pin. And I've just gone ahead and connected those two um, places which now means that the right 8 pin is now providing power to what used to be the PCI Express 12 volt power plane. So everything uh, gets 12 volt power. Then you need to send a 3.3 volt signal to the enable pin of the NCP81174 and that enables the vCore VRM. Now it does turn the vCore VRM on, however um, it might not actually enable the full power of the vCore VRM because um, like what these controllers do is they only run some of the phases and not all of the phases in idle and sometimes you want to make sure that it does run all the phases and in that case that only works on NVIDIA by the way um, there is a pin called the power state indicator pin or just PSI on the controller uh, you also connect that to 3.3 volts from this and that forces the controller to uh, like into all phase mode and that's what I've done here. Now the controller still doesn't run all the phases with the ePower just like this like it's not connected to anything um, it doesn't actually have any good spots to wire it up I'm planning to remove the capacitors on the back and then just have uh, a V-core and a ground strip which is where I'm gonna have connections and then I'll put the card like like this on a card where then a VCOR plate goes like this and a ground plate goes like this and that's gonna just kind of sit like that on a card. Um, then it should run all the phases because the PSI pin is pulled high. It doesn't, it literally does not have a choice. It will run all the phases. It's just right now, even with the power state indicator pin pulled to 3.3 volts, it only runs the upper phase with uh, nothing connected to it. Um, so there's like some, well, apparently the amount of phases it runs is still somewhat tied to current draw. However, with the 3.3 volts into the PSI pin, it now, like once you pull enough current, it should just run all the phases. It's just that apparently the uh, if you don't pull enough current, it, there's still a higher priority on a power saving mode um, and it runs only one phase. So, yeah, right now I can't definitively prove that all the phases on this work, but the PSI pin is pulled high. So, unless the controller is broken in a very, very weird specific way, um, this will run all the phases once you connect it to something. And, um, yeah, so I don't really know what I uh, am going to use this on yet, because the main reason why I made the ePower is that someone contacted me um, because they have a dead 980 Ti Kingpin and they would like to uh, take my core, which is right here. So I can't desolder cores without damaging them at least, so this is why there's a bit of PCB still attached to the core. Um, but this is how I'm going to be uh, shipping it, to, um, uh, yeah. Because uh, the P like the package is going outside the EU and shipping cost was a concern, so getting the package as small as possible was uh, important. So I cut the literally cut the core out out of the card, um, 
and yeah, I'll be shipping the core to that person. Uh, that person is trading a dead 980Ti classified in for the core, which is quite nice, which means that I'm gonna have another uh, very nice VRM to potentially turn into an ePower as well. Uh, and if that classified is using Samsung chips, it might also be a potential source of donor chips for the dead 980Ti Strix that I have, because that needs, I think, three new memory chips. But anyway, this core is going um, to someone because from what I can tell, the core is still functional. Like the physically, there's nothing wrong with the core except like, you know, some minor scratches, which is quite normal. But the important bit is that there's no cracks and the um, the underfill is not discolored in any way. It's a, it's a very uniform color. You might not be able to see it very well right now, but uh, there is a very uniform color uh, of the underfill around the core. Um, and yeah, and I mean there was very obvious damage to the memory traces on the PCB and it's quite unusual that such damage is on the card and then the core is also dead. So, um, you know, everything points towards the core being okay, which is why it's being shipped off to someone. Um, and yeah, then with the core literally cut out of the card, well, I might as well use the VRM for something, which is how this became a thing. Um, so yeah, like I said, I don't really know what I'm gonna be using this on yet, but it was a pretty easy build, um, like VRMs based on the NCP81174, pretty easy to um, turn into e-powers, um, because the, yeah, the NCP81174 runs off of 12 volts, like it gets its VCC uh, from 12 volts through a resistor network, which I think is supposed to regulate it down to 5 volts or something. But basically, you don't need to feed this VCC externally when you turn it into an ePower. Um, this will just have VCC uh, uh, as long as you make sure that every 12 volt power plane does get 12 volts, because it might be um, fed off the PCI Express power plane. Um, and then you only need one of these to uh, feed it enable, and if you're feeling like making sure the phases work, PSI. And uh, yeah, so pretty easy to turn into an ePower. I have to say that this right here, the 5 volt power uh, VRM, is still you know on the ePower, and it, it this just runs. You don't have to do anything to this. This just runs because the DDR MOSs need uh, for 5 volts for um, their gate drive. So these won't run without that. And if you have a card where that is not on the side of the card you're cutting off, you might have to externally feed this as well. But on the 980 Ti G1 uh, PCB. This is right here, and it just works, so, you know, that uh, powers the gates, this powers the controller, and everything runs. Uh, it still needs to be volt modded. The default voltage on this is 924 millivolts. Um, so, yeah, needs to be volt modded still. Um, but apart from that, like, working e-power, um, I'll be like, I'll put in I'll be putting a volt mod onto this and then prepare, um, yeah, preparing it for, you know, being mounted once I actually have to have a card to use this on, because currently I don't really have a card that would work with this, especially because I don't have a heatsink for the VRM anymore, like on the, the VRM heatsink was integrated into the card's main heatsink, um, so I'll, uh, I have a lot of, I have thermal tape. But I don't have a heatsink that's gonna very. Well, actually, I might. I have like an HD5870 reference PCB VRM heatsink that might fit this. Uh, I'm I'm gonna look into it because without a without a VRM heatsink, this is not gonna. I mean, this might work with like a 1060, a 960, or like a 660 Ti, 670 maybe. Um, 680 or 7970 are gonna, this is gonna need a heatsink for, because those can pull like 250 watts. Um, but anyway, just a small update video. Uh, I have another ePower now. This one was quite an easy build. Um, so if you have a dead 980Ti G1 Gaming, which there exists a lot of, because the memory VRM likes to blow up on these. So if you have one um, where like it's not savable because of memory or core damage, um, or maybe the memory VRM is just 
completely dead and you don't want to e-power it. Like, I don't know. If you have a 980Ti G1 gaming that where the core and the memory just cannot be saved, uh, you can do this. It's rather easy. Um, if you want to know specifically where to hook it up, it's kind of hard to see. Um, you know, just look up the datasheet for the NCP81174, locate the enable and the, uh, like the EN and the PSI pin, um, and then just solder 3.3 volts uh, to those. And uh, yeah, so that's the video. Didn't really want to say anything more than that. So thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.